Hello and welcome to On Point. My name is Cynthia Garcia. Today we will be talking about sex. To wait or not to wait. When are people ready to have safe and responsible sex? Should people wait until marriage? Here with us today, author of Sex Makes People Stupid, How to Avoid Ending Up with a Weenie, and program founder of Positively Waiting, Karen Krupp, and Dr. Richard McDonald from the Department of Family and Consumer Sciences, who studies sex education and human sexuality. Welcome. Thank you. When does um, sexual intimacy start in a person's life? Well, it really starts at the very early age. I think we tend to focus this on adults or when people get older or concerns, as we were talking earlier about middle school or high school. But the fact is that children are learning as tactile sensations are necessary for proper growth and development. And so uh, the focus that I have when we talk about uh, children or people growing up is that all of this really starts at a very, very young age, all the emotional development, and then later on, uh, maybe some academic types of things in there. So it really comes from an early age. Are there different stages and, or levels? Right. Uh, one of the things I do in the class is talk about the different stages of eight different levels of intimacy and that what is appropriate at what age and given a person's development. So it's not that, unfortunately, some people assume that having sexual intercourse is what you do when you become sexual. The fact is, there's all these stages before that. So does a person have to be a mature adult to experience sexual intimacy? Well, there's a lot of people pretending if, if they don't have to be. If we talk about social, emotional, physical readiness, um, brain development, the, the part of the brain that makes decisions, we're talking about someone being in their 20s, you know, 22, 23, and it, not that the brain just puts the brakes on, but it develops slowly after that and continues. So uh, people who are young who believe they have the sophistication, which they're led to believe by a lot of the media and things that they interact with, um, really aren't already and I think with the electronic mediation of relationships there's a lot of problems with the relationships uh, relating to other people emotional development when is the most mature or appropriate time to start having sex then well some of the things I do with my classes are to give them have them pretend that they're a teenager a child a teenager a parent and have to answer and ask these particular questions and some of those are when should I start having sex and usually people say well it depends on the person depends on the maturity but I ask them to choose an age below which it really wouldn't be good. And they have a hard time because we're led to this very variable state. Well, if someone's more mature or if they've been brought up differently and understand. So uh, it's, it's an issue that has to be really weighed and done on an individual basis in a sense. Karen, your program teaches people to wait until marriage. Um, why should people wait until marriage? have sex. Okay, well, A, our program doesn't teach people to wait until marriage in the traditional sense of that definition. Uh, we talk about waiting for a legal lifetime commitment to be fully bonded to one person faithfully because that's when there is the best sex, that is when there is the best emotional bonding, the best environment to raise children is with two people faithful to be intimate only with each other. We would say yes, marriage would be ideal because then it has social and legal uh, sanction, as it were. So uh, that's certainly one of the things that we would encourage, but there are people who decide that they are not going to get married for a variety of reasons, um, but they make legal contracts with each other and obviously the provision of children and that can, can provide the same kind of environment that we're looking for. We're talking about the the best health decision and in our case it would be sexual self-control um, until you've made a legal lifetime commitment. Usually people associate um, sex after marriage as a religious thing. Would you necessarily mean it's all true? All of the major religions encourage waiting for sex until marriage. So that's a fact. Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, all of the major religions encourage people to wait until they have made a, a legal, in that case, religious commitment as well. Um, it certainly isn't something that would be only for the religious, but there are benefits to saving sex until marriage that have nothing to do with religion. Is that something that inspires you, religion? 
inspires me. I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> I mean, that's like asking me, does air help you breathe? Mm -hmm. um, yes, it does. So uh, it, my faith did not drive my decision, if that's what you're asking me. And when I'm talking to people who don't share my faith, then I don't use any of those reasons. But there are spiritual health reasons related to saving sex until marriage, just as there are physical health reasons and emotional health reasons, financial health reasons, sexual health reasons, and uh, even children's health reasons. So with all those reasons said, when do you think a person is ready to start having sex? I just think that's the most odd question. When I ask that question in the classroom, I say, okay, how many of you have decided you'll wait until you're ready for sex? A lot of the kids will say, oh, yes, yes, Mrs. Krupp, you've convinced me. I'm absolutely going to wait until I'm ready. And I take out my five-year calendar, and I say, okay, show me the day, point to the day that you will be ready to have herpes. What does, th I don't know what that means. So you have to, you kind of, <laughs> you have to make that clear. What does it mean ready to have sex? Ready to have sex with what, a, a number of different partners? ready to have sex with a specific partner. So it would really depend on what you meant by ready. Because there isn't a day where someone's ready to get herpes. So you're saying that everyone, everyone has a different time to be ready based on other, depending on different factors? Not in my world. Okay. In my world, it's very, very clear. Okay. Um, and using marriage is a perfect target. I was engaged three times. I got married once. I knew the day that I got married. I didn't forget it. It was a big event in my life. I never had to wake up and go, gee, am I married today? That never happened. But there were times when I was in love with someone that wasn't in love with me. So I was ready to have sex with them, but they were not in love with me. And so when you say ready, I just, I think that's a very dangerous way of defining something that can have an impact on the rest of your life. But if I say to you, Cynthia, are you married? Your answer is what? No. No. You know that you're not married. Right. There's no question in your mind. If you got married tomorrow, then I could say, Cynthia, do you know if you're married? And you could say, well, yes, I am. I got married. Mm -hmm. You would know. So for me, that's a perfectly legitimate way of saying that is a clear point in time when I can have as much sex as I want as often as possible because it's good for me. It's good aerobic exercise. It's good for me. So for me, that is a, that is a, sim a way of simplifying the discussion. Okay. Um, Dr. McDonald, you mm -hmm. teach students about sex and all its aspects. Mm -hmm. um, what is your position on abstinence? Well, I think it's appropriate, uh, it's appropriate thing to talk about, and we do. Um, the thing we're dealing with today, though, is we have a very changed uh, nature of society. When people are getting married, for example, Absolutely. most of my students, they expect to be 25 to 30, 32, 34. Now, what are the chances that someone will actually wait until they're married at a later age? So I think what we go on is that while someone's making those decisions, they need to have information that will protect them and not have these unintended consequences. We don't want children brought up without parents that care about them. We don't want genital herpes. We don't want S other STDs, AIDS, and so on. So uh, it's a matter of information and making judgments on this and having the power to do that and empowering people to make those decisions. So instead of focusing on marriage so much, what I tell my students is if you have any doubts, go slow. Don't move it because you can't back up from that position. When you start being physically intimate with someone, you don't, you don't stop being physically intimate. You'll stop the relationship, likely. So it's, uh, it's something that's not, um, it's not sort of formulaic. It's not just like a certain clear point for many people, especially because they're adults for a long time. In the days when people were married at 14, 15, 16, many of my students, their grandparents, their parents were married as young teenagers. That was easier because there were fewer years when someone could get pregnant or could get these things, and the expectations for women were not to have careers, go to college. So we live in a very different world than those people did.